Hello there, it's Jeff Harrison at MacroMonster.com. Just want to give you some insight into a new product that actually replaces Shelby's Bitmap Perspective Macro. Uh, we had two competing products for a while, but uh, after some work, we've got mics uh, working better than the other one. It has some advanced functionality. All right, so let's uh, have a look at what we can do with this one. So let's say we have a product box such as this. And by the way, I'd recommend watching this uh, video in high definition if you can. If you check down to the bottom right of the YouTube player, you should be able to choose the quality mode. And if you set that to high definition, you'll get the best results. All right, just for watching anyway. So in uh, CrellDraw, I believe since X3, if you select a shape and hold down the Shift key, double click on the Rectangle tool, it'll create a new rectangle the size of whatever you're surrounding. So the reason I just did that now was because I'm going to make a quick box uh, that I'm going to stuff these pieces into. So I'm just going to extrude a little piece like that, double click on here, and as you can see I can rotate this around in free space. All right, but that's not quite what we're looking for. I'm just going to rotate it a little more so it's something a little more reasonable for a box. Let's say something like that is, is fine. All right, I'm going to hit Control S to save our work good habit to get into by the way and then I'm going to break apart this box select the extruded edge press control K and that breaks it apart all right so I'm going to just move this piece to out of the way and I often do that by hitting control X just cutting it to the clipboard temporarily I'm going to ungroup these remaining pieces by hitting control U I'm going to hold down the alt key select these two pieces press delete so they're gone then I'll paste back in the front piece, which is control V. I'll bring that back. All right, so now we have the three pieces that we need there. All right, so how this works is uh, uh, with this new macro, it can deal with mixed shapes such as vectors or bitmaps. I can select all of these pieces, for example, go up to the icon for the macro, and it's giving me an option. If it's sensing that it's, it, there's more pieces involved than just simply a bitmap, it'll give you the option to... Um, uh, rasterize them or convert them to a bitmap at a resolution you choose there. I'm just going to choose uh, 300 in this case. And as you may have noticed, there was an option where it was telling you that it was working. And that can be useful on large bitmaps. And here, let's go ahead and click that. Rasterizing it as well. The smaller pieces obviously get processed a little bit quicker. Now what's interesting about this macro is that it doesn't depend on uh, Corel Photo Paint like the old one did. So, so that can be a good thing if you don't have PhotoPaint installed or you like the obvious speed that you're seeing here with this new improvement. So if we zoom in on it, you can see a little fine edge there, but if I was to simply convert this whole thing to a new bitmap or you exported it at 300, uh, let's just go convert it to a bitmap here at 300. We'll keep the transparent background, why not? It cleans all of that stuff up pretty good like that. So as you can see, it worked out pretty good. Um, very fast. We're also staying right inside CorelDRAW. Uh, let's go to the next page and see uh, what it can do on another type of example. All right, so here's an example of a fellow that used to contribute to the CorelDRAW groups at one time. I had made a fictional billboard uh, with his you know, image on it and some uh, text to put it together. And so I have a, bi a, a image here of a bit of a billboard, rather, and uh, I've already pre-drawn a shape that's, um, you know, basically it's just a four-point curve. Move the nodes into position, and it's as simple as selecting the bitmap and forcing it in there like that, just to give you an idea. Let's have a look at the next option here. Same kind of idea. Mixed shapes involved, where I've got some vector text in there. Just select it all. And in this case, it'll ask me, again, what do I want to rasterize that to? And then it just pops right in there very quickly. So it's as you can see, it's more than just simple skewing. There's some perspective applied to it, and that's why it's uh, it's working the way it is. Here's one another example real quickly of the billboard type idea. Who doesn't like cakes? I know I do. Here's an example of uh, having an image. I just created a quick fictional company there. I like Liberty. I like chocolate. So um, put them together. And um, so let's say we wanted to put this into that space. Maybe it's something you want to do a quick proof for a customer to give them an example of what their logo might look on a vehicle, especially if there's some bitmaps involved in the artwork. 
Um, now on this one I've given a bit of a background padding that's this yellow area here just to make it look the way I wanted to on the space available. So I'm hap going to convert all of that to a bitmap through the macro by by uh, selecting those shapes, running the macro and then it's going to force it into that spot there. Now obviously this doesn't look quite right because we let's say we wanted to look be able to look through the um, the power clip rectangle there. If we left click on this and go into, or control left click on it rather, that breaks into power clip mode allowing you to select the image. If you have photo paint installed you, this edit bitmap button should appear. Left click on that. It should launch photo paint for you where you can do a better job of you know masking out the white areas here. If you press the W key that brings up the magic wand tool you can select shift or select uh, just a white area um, and then let's say you wanted to clear away all the white areas you could go to the mask menu mask outline pick similar and now it's selected all of the white areas throughout the whole image now for inverting the mask it's control shift I you can see right there and let's say we want to zoom in on this and reduce the mask just a little bit here I'm going to um, go to mask outline, go to reduce, and maybe go to two pixels. Um, you can choose feathering as well if you prefer to use that. It doesn't, well, won't go get into that right now. But to save it back to Corel Draw, you could simply click the X and it'll prompt you to save, or you can hit Control S and then close either way. I'm just going to do it that way. So now it's sitting there, which is fine. Now to get out of the power clip mode, you can control click over on an empty area. And now the only thing left to do is right click on that rectangle, which has a black outline right now. That'll get rid of that. And we can zoom in to see what kind of quality we have here. It's looking all right. And so like I said, this might be a quick example, quick way to show a customer what their what a logo would look like perhaps on the front of a vehicle. Here's a quick example of uh, dropping in maybe some architectural elements onto an existing image. I've already drawn in a rectangle at that point there where the green box is. Uh, so I could just select a shape. And then now we have a window kind of put into that position pretty quickly. And if you really want to try some more unusual advanced things, maybe you can find some textures like this brick one that I found that I've set up for repeating. Uh, by the way, I'll, I think I'll probably give you a copy of this whole file if you buy the product, just so you can use it to quickly try out some of these effects. And let's say, and for this case, I've, I've made a little rectangle there for the yellow section and also for this um, top bar outline. And the reason is we need a four-point rectangle to drop this into, first of all, like that. And then you can power clip that into the side of the building, more like that. Take this window here drop it in there. I don't know. Yeah, it's something to play with. Maybe that's something useful for you to, to uh, work with. Okay, so that's some examples of the new Mike's Perspective Bitmap Macro, which replaces the Shelby's Bitmap Macro. And I hope you enjoy it, and especially with the speed and some of the new advanced functionality.